Most of us are guilty of complaining we're tired, but few of us know the reality of extreme exhaustion. Today we're looking at chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as ME, ME. The underlying causes, the surprising triggers and the best way to manage this medical mystery. And for more, we welcome Dr Heidi Nichols, CEO of Emerge Australia. Hi Heidi, great to have you with us. Um, so how does chronic fatigue syndrome, and you'll explain why that's an important uh, part of that word, chronic fatigue syndrome, how does that differ from tiredness? Okay, so the reason why we're flagging up syndrome as being so important is that chronic fatigue is a symptom of many, many different illnesses. But what we're really talking about today is what we call myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome. We often use the acronym MECFS. And when people have MECFS, what most people are really surprised to hear is that about 25% of people with it are so unwell, they're actually housebound or bedbound. So there's a whole range of symptoms. It's a chronic complex condition people can be unwell for a, a really long time with this whole array of symptoms. Mm. You know, historically there was some doubt that chronic fatigue syndrome was actually real. Obviously you're talking about people who are very sick. So what's the reality and how did this confusion come about? Okay, so MECFS is a real biomedical illness. Mm. The problem is that it's been chronically underfunded for research. So in the last few years, thankfully there has been a little bit more research that started happening. And what we're finding is that there are underlying biomedical biological differences with patients that have the, the condition. So the things that they're finding is there's brain inflammation, widespread brain inflammation, and there are things in the brain, there are substances like lactate which shouldn't be in there. So there's a whole line of research which is pursuing the, the brain chemistry. There's also research which is happening at an intracellular level, which is finding that the batteries in the cell, which is called the mitochondria that drives all of your energy, that the mitochondria just aren't working as they should be. And and you'd think that they'd not be working correctly to pump out enough energy. What seems to be happening is that they're kind of on overdrive. So people at, at, in a resting state who have this condition, that's all of the energy that they can possibly muster. And if you try and generate more energy, and for some people that could be taking a shower, mm -hmm. it could be just trying to walk to the letterbox, and you try and generate that bit more energy and they just can't do it. And that triggers all of the symptoms. So the sore throats, the headaches, the, the swollen glands, mm -hmm. all of those problems problems are going to get worse. And what the scientific studies, I guess, have proven is there are certain triggers. Uh, so can you just take us through those? Yeah, so what we often hear at Emerge Australia is that this starts with um, a, a viral uh, infection. So a lot of people will have glandular fever or a, a flu-like illness, mm -hmm. and they just don't recover from it. There can also be physical traumas. So people might be in a car crash or even have something like dental surgery. And it's something that puts the body under a, an extreme amount of stress and they just don't get better. Mm. So why is it then that women are two to four times more likely to get this than men? What's the connection? So we don't know why women are getting this more often than men. We know that it affects about 80% of women compared to 20% of men. Mm. And actually there are other illnesses where the, the statistics are kind of similar. So there are other immune inflammatory diseases. So things like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, they all affect more women than men. At the moment we we just don't know enough about the biology to, to see what's happening but we do see that there are some differences yeah and I guess it would be scary if someone's perhaps in the early stages and they don't know you have a partner perhaps in that situation so if, if people suspect that maybe someone they know or love has chronic fatigue syndrome what are some things that can make a difference so the biggest things are resting and pacing so the worst thing to do is to push through so we, we hear from a lot of patients that have you know they've felt so well they're just not getting better and they think well you know I'm just gonna get it together tomorrow mm. I'm gonna push through mm. and actually what we say to people is try and stay within the energy envelope and just try and manage that and at Emerge Australia we have ways that we can teach people and help people to improve their quality of life. Yeah, terrific. terrific to have you with us Heidi thank you so much. Thank you Heidi.